Hello, welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to talk about canine genetic panels. Are they crucially important? Should you consider doing one? Join me, we'll cover all of that and you'll learn something today. Over the years, I've had a number of clients do DNA panels on their dogs. Most often, it was when they were curious about what potential mix of breeds their dogs might be. There have also been a number of people using these sorts of things on YouTube. I think about Rhett and Link and how they did genetic testing on their dogs. How well do we really know them? And I mean, do we even really know what they are, okay? So there are those uh, doggy DNA tests out there that'll tell you what breed or breeds make up your mutt and they give you the exact percentages as well. And our families ran the test for our dogs and the results are in, but we have not seen them. Uh, so you can bet we're gonna play a game to find out who knows their dog better. I've also had a few occasions over the years where a specialist of some sort will see a patient of mine and they'll end up recommending the DNA panel because they are hoping to screen for a genetic issue of some sort. Most recently, I saw an adolescent Rottweiler. The neurologist suspected from the brain MRI that this dog might have a storage disease and so recommended the Embark DNA testing in order to try to rule some of those storage diseases in or out as a possibility. That kind of sparked me talking about DNA tests with my friends. So I would ask them, have you done these tests on your dog? I'm kind of in a nerdy way curious about it, but then I was looking looking at the cost of them and it just wasn't in my budget, especially when I have a dog that I know her genetic history. She also is not clinically showing symptoms for anything at this point. It just wasn't worth the money in my tight budget to try to satisfy my nerdy, curious nature. A couple months went by and one of the friends that I'd talked to about the DNA panels ended up gifting me an Embark DNA dog genetic test for Christmas. I was pretty excited and then I also thought, ooh, maybe I could use this to show you what the process is like and go over what you can expect and what my thoughts are. To be very clear, my friend gifted this panel to me. It was not Embark in any way. This is not an advertisement. This is not an endorsement. I found the packaging very easy, simple, and straightforward. I love this, how it's a little dog. That's so cute. The instructions were also clear and easy to follow. It was simple to do. You use the code to activate your specific kit, which I've done. And then here is the swab and the solution. And so there's great clear instructions here about how to use the swab. Then when you go into the rest of the box, they have a prepaid return envelope in there. All you do is swab the inside of your dog's mouth. You do have to have some time between when they last ate, um, which for my Labrador was probably the hardest part <laughs> of all of this. Uh, but we survived. My one concern was that maybe she would chomp on the swab and try to swallow part of it, um, but she didn't mind the swab. I can see that some dogs might, as you do have to, you know, be in their mouth for quite a long Long period of time in order to get enough of their skin cells that enough DNA can be extracted from it at the laboratory. Then I sent the sample back to Embark and this was interesting. It took well over five weeks for me to get results after I had sent it through the mail. Now the kind of good part was that Embark does tell you to expect a number of weeks before you get results. They will send you an email every time the sample progressed through 
their steps in their lab. So first they receive it, then they have to extract the DNA, then they have to test the DNA, then they have to compile the report, you know, all those things. But they will tell you as it moves through and then give you an updated timeline for when to expect results. So they did do a pretty good job of managing expectations, but certainly if my dog was sick or I needed these results um, for a medical reason, I would have been having a much harder time being patient. I did find the results interesting, as was expected. My dog is 100% a Labrador. All of her parents, all of her grandparents are Labradors. I did really appreciate how they tested for a bunch of different genetic issues, some of them more breed specific, some of them not breed specific. My dog does carry one copy of the exercise induced collapse one allele doesn't mean she'll have that disease it would only be a concern if i was looking to breed her which i'm not thankfully she was clear for every other thing they also fascinatingly show the percentage of wolfishness and i loved this because i hear in the clinic so many times that we need to feed dogs as if they were wolves because they're practically wolves and i mean this amount of genetic correlation with a wolf just is further evidence about how much our dogs are no longer wolves and i mean we have a bunch of research on this too about how they digest things differently they have different nutritional needs than wolves do we know all of this the people that say we need to feed them like wolves are just wrong i also liked how there was a coefficient of inbreeding listed the breeder that i got my dog from had tried to calculate it as well but of course the calculations are just going to be a bit of a ballpark and each individual in the litter is going to have a different coefficient of inbreeding so i found this very fascinating to learn about my dog do i wish it was lower always does she currently have any medical issues that would make me say it should have been no they also had a bunch of predictions for how much shedding she would do her adult weight um, and a, a number of other things about her appetite i took all of these with quite a grain of salt her weight tends to fluctuate between 30 and 32 kilos at this point so their prediction was off that does keep her at a body condition score of five out of nine they rated her appetite as normal which made me laugh because i wasn't sure if that meant an like a normal for all dog breeds or if it was normal for a labrador <laughs> but she does have quite the appetite <laughs> so here are my thoughts overall i mean is this really worth it to be honest with you for most dogs I'm gonna say it's not. Now, I'm gonna put some caveats in there. If your dog is having a medical issue and having some genetic information may help to diagnose it or to rule out other potential causes for that medical issue, then it could be a helpful thing to do. And so you can talk to your veterinarian about it if your dog is having some medical issues that might be genetically linked. However, there are so many medical issues that we just don't have enough genetic information about yet so that may or may not be helpful in your case and there are a lot of times where genetic results don't allow us a diagnosis it might just help guide us down a path of different diagnostics for a dog that's healthy this would essentially be something that you would do because you had the disposable income you found that you were curious about it and you were just going to take it as something that's interesting. And Embark was very good about saying this themselves that just because something shows up in the genetics doesn't mean that the dog will end up having that disease, doesn't necessarily diagnose a disease. It's just a bit more information to add to the clinical picture. There's also this whole nature versus nurture type thing genetics plus environment are all important things when looking at the clinical picture for one specific dog. The other reason I hesitate to recommend that everybody goes out and does this is because it could cause a lot of stress if you get results back that your dog is carrying 
carrying alleles for a specific condition, but that's why in veterinary medicine we recommend things like general physical exams and blood work panels to track trends over time. If you have a mixed breed dog and you don't know anything about their potential genetic history, it might be a fun thing to do to find out. However, I would caution you that it, you don't allow it to change how you feel about your dog. I would hate for human bias to play a role and that they get an unexpected test result back and then changes how they feel about the dog who hasn't changed at all. The dog is still exactly the same. And so keep that in mind if you are considering doing one of these tests. Oh man, this reveal is so big. 40% Chihuahua. Oh! No! <laughs> no, I hate Chihuahuas! <laughs> what? Yes, I love the fact that, how does this make you feel? <laughs> oh my gosh, can you take her out? She's, she's so much Chihuahua, Take man. her behind the door. You, okay, okay. I don't, she, I don't even like Chihuahuas. Listen, yeah, I mean, there's they're more, not, there's they're more not reveals. even pretty to me. There's more reveals to come because the All right, 17... you can bring her back now. 0.1% is poodle. <laughs> poodle? I don't know. I, I should have known that. She's got that soft hair. It's not curly, but it's super soft. Ha! What? I'm going to go out on a limb right now and say that there's no Dotson. And it's going to make Link, he's just going to, he's not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> that is... Correct. <laughs> I love Dotsons, man. My kind of dog is a Dotson. Let me just say it. It's got to be a Dotson in order for me to like it. I, I got follow, a black Dotson and I want a brown Dotson. But you I know follow what? so many Dotsons on like Instagram. I don't have any Dotsons, but that's my favorite dog. My favorite dog is a dog I don't own. 10.7% rat terrier. <laughs> This gets rat better. Terrier. It only gets better. That's like the worst name for a dog. 9.8% miniature pincher. Hey, boom. <laughs> miniature pincher. Yeah, so you each have a point at this point. And then 6.3% cocker spaniel. It's huh. a two pointer so dog. I, I nailed that. That's the full result. So there's no Papillon? No. This is Nothing that little... I thought she was is what she is. This is. So overall, at this point, I don't think that this is something you need to rush out and do. In no way do I think of it as crucial or necessary for the majority of dogs at this point. So please tell me down below, have you ever done a DNA panel on your dog? If you don't mind sharing, why did you do it? Was it everything that you hoped it would be? I always love hearing from you. So please don't hesitate to give me future video topic suggestions in those comments as well. I am always looking to cover topics that you might be interested in and to prove that I read all of the comments, I share a new one every week. Thank you so very much. I put up a new video most Fridays and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. You take care and bye. She's practically died from starvation, but it's been over 30 minutes since she's had any food. So we're gonna open up this swab here. Good thing they say drinking water is fine. All right, so this is what the swab looks like. Yeah, we have to swab your cheek. Oh, you like it? Very nice. All right, I'm gonna swab your cheek.